This is some round seven action at home at the zoo against Parkdale Footy Club, who are above us on the ladder this year. So this is an important game to get the four points. The support on the Wattle Park vlogs have been incredible. You guys are really getting around us this season and it's muchly appreciated. If you don't want to miss any of the action, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below. Morning, Drews. Uh, game two, while I'm not playing. Um, two of the better mornings we've seen down at Wattle Park since I bloody hung up the boots because of the shoulder. So, a um, little bit jealous. I got a bit of FOMO. It's cold and it's early. You're doing great. I hope I actually need to wear this because last week it got so hot. It was like weirdly like, it was a cheeky 20 degrees last week. So I couldn't wear my English Premier League gaffer top. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I get to don it today. Yeah, I said three alarms because I just knew that the first two were going to be ignored. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And they were, they were. I set my first alarm at like 6.50 and I it went off and I was like, what am I doing? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first alarm was bed. met with like aggression. Yeah. The second alarm was met with depression and the third alarm was met with like, Acceptance. <laughs> Back for more days. Yeah, a little bit more. I didn't get enough last time. <laughs> I had to redeem myself. Have you got your pickle juice? Hey? Have you got your pickle juice? No, I haven't got it today. Oh, yeah. Hopefully you've hydrated. I'm going to, yeah. Hopefully there's some water that gets out on the ground. How long are you out for? Well, it was meant to be three or four, but I went to the physio um, yesterday and he said if we can free it up and get some of the range of movement back. I might be able to play next week. You're not playing next week. No way. I might, I might be able to make the comeback next week, but we'll know by Wednesday. I've got stuff to tick off over the weekend, um, and then hopefully train on Tuesday. And if I can't mark, and if I can't kick, then it'll be an easy decision on Wednesday when I go to the physio. But if I get through Tuesday, there's a slight chance that the McDonald resurrection is back. Last week I predicted that I'd yeah, kick the match winner and we got close. It was, uh, I was deep inside Ford 50 when we were down by three points for 30 seconds to go. My prediction this week, I'm gonna have a career ending injury, um, very painful, <laughs> likely hospitalized, and my Mexico trip is in jeopardy next week. Rough guide so the people on the bench have a bit more of an idea. So if you come off and you're a midfielder who's a runner, look for another runner on the bench. You'll be like, you're the guy that I need to swap with. Don't grab. If you're bakes, don't grab straight, you know? So, it's, it's, it's a bit of simple, simple math, but, but it's something we need to get a little bit better at. As our board structure, sometimes we are bringing off a gut runner and putting on a, a small board or something. So we're just gonna be a little bit smarter with that. So if you see where you are, roughly know the guys that you're gonna be swapping with, and if you have, don't know what's going on, just come see me, all right? And come see Kate and Kate and some magnets and hopefully TC. <laughs> Checkers made some brave moves at selection this week. So Cam, who was our centre half forward, has been moved into the back line. And then Rogie, who's been doing some great stuff on the wing, is a little bit sore this week. So he's going to play deepest forward. Both those moves proved masterful throughout the game as Rog kicked off the game with two first quarter goals that set up the term for the Wattle Park Animals. So starting forward, new position, a lead out full chested, bang, take a mark like I am absolutely Jonathan Brown. But as I'm on the way down, as I'm on the decline, he's giving me a little shove and I have milked it as if I am an entire dairy farm. Go down, do a bit of a front tumble, gives me the 50 metre penalty, kick to go off from the top of the square, what better way to start? Roger's a confidence player, so when he kicks a goal early, I'm like getting around, I'm getting around him. And it is good because last week, obviously, I got the two-hand ball drop. Good to see another two-hand ball drop in the forward line once I'm gone. So it was good to see a ball um, weirdly float through the sticks once Rog kicked it. Obviously not spinning the right way, but yeah, it was good by Rog there.
halfway through the first term, it became complete carnage for the lads. Colleen went down with a knee injury. Scafey went down with an ankle. There was just players and bodies dropping absolutely everywhere. Rog, before the game kicked off, said he was worried that he might get a career-ending injury. And when he came off uh, during the first quarter and said, my fingers popped out, I thought, what are you talking about? But sure enough, I go to lay a tackle, land sort of hand first, spike my finger in the ground. I look and ha see what the damage is, and my ring thin finger is pointing at right angles. I was looking at, I've never been so terrified in my life. I thought I, thought I nearly snapped the thing clean off. I don't think any, any of the injuries were in the back line, so I'm really just focused on my back six. Quarter time, Rog comes up to me and he goes, you wouldn't believe it. Like, my, my fingers come out. And I go, oh, would you, did you get it on film? That's good footage. And he's like, no. And I'm like, well, it doesn't matter, mate. Like, this means nothing. What a great start. Forward line's clicking. I know it's been a, a point of issue for us over the last couple of weeks. Rogers kicked two goals and had a goal assist. He's been on fire, but he popped his finger out halfway through that first term. Big thing we got to, we've got to work on this week, and this is, this is, we're learning every week. We're trying something new every week to be these big teams. Just make sure we don't get complacent. Make sure we, we, we come out firing again. We came out well. We kicked the, kicked the first with Roger, and they got us a bit up and about, and then we just run on momentum. So if they kick one or two, don't heads down. We've got to fight back to sort of get our momentum back. After a four goal to one first quarter, another great start. Last week we started really well against Ormond and obviously lost by a point. But this week we had a similar start. Four goals to one, off to an absolute flyer. And it continued in the second term. Recruit of the year, Ethan Baker, got off the chain. He kicked two goals in the second term and just ran rampant throughout the midfield. It happens in the horse racing sometimes. A horse goes down a few classes and it's a $1.20 favourite and it just wins it every single time. Ethan Baker is a horse that has gone down a few classes. He's a Group 1 horse and it's gone down to an open class. And you can just tell, he is running a mark out there. Um, Bakesy, there was a time when he was in the same team as Tom Stewart and Darcy Fort. He's now running around with Will Taylor and Riley Stray, but I tell, I tell you what, he, he may have declined in uh, standard, but he hasn't declined in ability. Yeah, well, here's what I have an issue with Bags, because I come in and everyone is, I'm the new toy. Everyone wants to talk to camera and everyone wants to play with camera. Bags come in, I feel like Woody in Toy Story 2. It's like, I don't want to play with you anymore, right? And there's that weird scene where he falls through the cards. That is so scary. Now with McDonald going out a couple of weeks ago, we needed to find some goals and uh, we found an unlikely hero who seems to be bobbing up and performing. Cammy D in the forward line is an absolute live wire and a half. Um, he picks it up from the pocket. Tails provides one of the all-time great shepherds and then Cam slots it on the run, James Hurd style, and kicks one of the goals of the year so far for the lads. Yeah, little dap. I was standing there top of the goal square and I thought, you center this every single time. Don't get ambition mixed up with ability, Cam Dapich. But sure enough, he's, uh, you know what? I reckon he was probably trying to center it to me at the top of the square, but it's floated through, straight through the goals. Cam Dapich, that was a fire starter. That was one that we really needed as well. I feel like they had a bit of momentum. So Dap, credit to you, mate. Towards the back end of the second, Parkdale started to uh, come hard at us, to be honest. And I was coaching on the boundary line. And I just felt like there was a couple of uncontested marks that probably shouldn't have happened in defense. So I told the runner to go out. Just say, tighten up a touch. We just need to tighten up. There's five minutes to go, but I just need the defense to go arm across rather than sort of play this zone defense. So the runner went out to Baylor McCabe to convey the message and he wasn't happy. He was not impressed. He was frustrated with the midfield. He was frustrated with how much supply they were getting. And he wasn't he wasn't content uh, with that piece of feedback. So he came off to the pine and we had a colourful discussion about how the game was going. And if the runner comes out to you and says, Bailey, you got to tighten up, what you do is you tighten up. He sort of threw the baby out with the bathwater. Every single toy was out of the cot. He just about ripped the fucking mattress out of there. He's playing different to me though. He's playing on a whole different dude. These guys actually gonna move. I'm trying to get into inset marks because like, we got no one else to be able to mark the fucking ball and then distribute the ball. Yeah, it's almost like we gotta stop them first before getting offensive. But we've stopped it for a quarter and a half. I don't know what's happened in this back half. We've done the same thing. A couple of marks. We just need for, to tighten up for a nearly tiny bit. a fucking half of the game, and they haven't been able to get an inside fifty. Yeah. So the last ten minutes of this game, like this quarter, they've had fucking ten of them. I don't know what the fuck's changing. 
Bad vibes, really bad vibes. I was I was not enjoying his vibe. And all I was like, get this guy a vape really quickly. He is he needs a vape right now because he's on edge. So we've had four guys go down. Bakes has just oh. kicked two on the term and ask him what oh, grief he's got at the moment. I'm not sure. I've never done a hamstring before, but I think I might have tweaked it. <laughs> oh, no. To be honest, but I'll get a rub on it and see if you can get a go. Like if you ever want to fucking one on one or that. It's just towards the end they were taking marks, and we just needed to tighten up. As yeah, but it's on the fucking rebound. But once it's coming yeah, in yeah, the position, that obviously if it kicks to the advantage, you're fucking disadvantaged. But if it's a 50 50 ball, you've won every single one of them. If it's 80 20, they yeah, might win. But 50 50, you've we won every fucking ball. And when they kick a goal, it's not on you, it's on the whole fucking bag. Don't be afraid to hold each other accountable. And back line, if you think it's the midfielders that's not coming back, call out, call them out. So you Whoever it is, come back, come back. Don't be afraid to hold. I know we're a positive bunch, but we can hold each other accountable because it cost us a game last week and it can't cost us. There's a lot of boys. If you see a man free and you see someone who hasn't got a man, it's just it could be anyone. It could be Cam. You're playing forward, but I need you to grab this guy. So just make sure we're just using that voice. Sometimes we just mouth guard in, don't speak. For Cam. The third quarter kicks off and Parkdale have made some moves. So they put number two from the midfield into the forward line. And he just looked like prime Kyle Langford. This man was just getting involved in everything. He didn't quite punish us on the scoreboard. He might have kicked two goals three or two goals four. But um, number two for Parkdale was unbelievable. And he was someone that we really needed to make a move on at some stage. Otherwise, he was just going to take the game away from our grasp. Yeah, I mean, he was a cut above. I believe he's a ones player. I think he, he what, what he said to me is that he's a back pocket in the ones. That I don't know if he's coming back from injury or whatever it may be. Be, but back pocket in the ones that um, is now playing in the forward line in the thirds and he started to run right a little bit he was having fun out there and we needed someone to stop him we needed to, uh, the key to victory I think was making sure that man was not their key to victory Dan and Cam in defense were absolutely amazing um, I think Will Taylor called Dan and Sandals the nutsack when they were playing together I don't know what sort of clever and immature nickname we could have for Dan and Cam, um, the flower pot man. But um, they were superb in defence. Cam, who is a natural centre-half back, was trying to play half-forward last couple of weeks and providing a great contest. But he went back to what he knew in defence this week and really locked locked it all down, which was awesome. And um, But he was playing deep, and I want to play higher up because let your boy run. Um, and then I was like, all right, I'm a bit gassed. I'll just go play on him. And just wasn't tight enough. He did take a mark on me, kick a goal. But I did spoil one straight after that. I was like, you're not getting this one again because my ego was flat. And I took a couple of marks on him. Don't show the kicks, though, because a couple of them went, um, went astray. Once again, we fade out in quarters and we seem to fade out in games. Uh, Parkdale reduced the margin to five points just on the three-quarter time siren. And we had a bit of PTSD from last week because it was a similar situation. We played super well for two and a half quarters. We took the foot off the gas and then we got caught towards the end. We lost by one or two points last game and we're only up by five at three quarter time in this one. Three quarter time, but vibes were still high enough because we still had the lead. So, but deja vu, I was stressed. You couldn't drop the undroppable, could you? No, well, we did it last week. We're not, it's not good enough. Um, there was a little bit of push and shove towards the end there, and the Parkdale lads were like, they want to look tough for YouTube. They're back. I don't know if they've seen the previous episodes, but we're not, we're not a very tough side, so maybe they've been tuning into the Mitch Robinson vlogs or the, the Prime Train vlogs. Cause, you know, C. McDonald doesn't throw his weight around, that's for sure. Hey, we've got the breeze, boys. We kick one too early, they're going to drop their heads. Yeah. 25 minutes, cup busting. When there's a ball to be won on the wing, let's just get numbers there. Yep. Even if you 10, 15 off the contest, just get numbers there because and it's, a three, right. it's a three on two on, in their favour at the moment on the wings. So just get there. Checkers went to Connor Rogers, who played superbly in the forward line throughout the game, and said, Rog, we need you to do a job. We need you to go to number two, who has been prolific. 
in the Parkdale forward line and we need you to stop him. Yeah, so I've broken my finger. I've snapped it in half. I've already kicked two goals and got us got us in front of the game. And the coach, Chekis, comes over to me and says, Rog, they're full forward. He's running absolute right. We need someone to stop him. Can you go with him? I want you to take him out the game. I said, Chekis, I was half black back flanker for the first 20 years of my career. Let's do this. Parkdale kicked the first two of the term and they get the lead. And we're all looking around going, is this going to trend the way it did last week? Is this happening again? Is this deja vu? To be honest, as the coach from the boundary line, I felt really confident. I felt like we, it's not going to happen twice in a row to us. It happened last week, but we've learned from our mistakes. And I felt like they had a, a, a bit of a patch Parkdale, but I had a feeling that we were going to get a crack at it at some stage. I felt like we were going to get our five minutes. And it's just whether we can convert when we get our five minutes, was going to be the, the story of the day. God. I've got a weirdly good feeling. I've got a weirdly good feeling. They've had their five minutes. They played so well in that third and the fourth. I've just got this feeling that we're going to get some momentum here. Come We've got back. Come back, no players on the bench anymore. Three blokes have gone off injured. This is a brave effort. So we're hanging on for dear life. Jarrah against the tide, kicks a snag, and he gets us back within one or two points. And it is game on for the last eight minutes of this contest. With eight minutes to go, it was all even. Um, they had a couple of shots late to put themselves in front and they couldn't hit the scoreboard. We had a couple of blazing shots to put us in front. We couldn't hit the scoreboard. And it was just this seesawing affair and no one knew how it was going to end. Cam got a high free kick at half forward. He pops it up beautifully to the point post. And Jared Davis takes a mark with a minute 30 to go to potentially win the game for the Wattle Park Animals. And I kind of had this moment. I've never done this before in my life. I felt like Kobe, where I was like, I looked at Jarrah and I was like, this is on us to win the game. I was like, I'm just going to kick this as close to the goal line as possible. Um, and Jarrah marked it. If there's any man on our team that we had the ball in his hands and we relied upon him to kick the goal, it would 100% probably be me. But Jarrah Davis, isn't it? Jared Davis is a close second, so I'm glad that he did have it. And the snap, the way he kicked it, the angle I was at, I had no idea if it was a goal or behind. The goal umpire danced to try and find it. And it's one of those weird ones where you don't really celebrate a behind. Even though we hit the lead with not long left, it wasn't one where everyone celebrated. So I think the goal umpire was a bit confused. No one celebrated. It's gone pretty high. And I'm like, please do not call this out in the full. But sure enough, done one of these ones, pointed the finger, one point we hit the lead, and then we just needed to defend the game. Jay Davis's kick is floating towards the goals and it sneaks in for a behind, which puts the Wattle Park animals up by one point with a minute to go. Parkdale kicks straight through the guts, Cam spoils, it becomes a loose ball and Parkdale up on. They are going end to end at a rapid pace. There's about 50 to 40 seconds to go. They get it long to number two. It's Rog versus number two. And Rog has a decision. If he runs up at the ball, and it just hops over him and goes out the back. Number two will convert and win the game. The ball gets bombed in and it is a genuine one-on-one -on -one with me v him. I played back shoulder all day, but this was the first time where I decided to play in front. Uh, and it bounced right in front of me. And it was one of those ones where if this does sort of a tennis ball bounce, it's going straight over my head. He is out and I'll just cost us the game. Could have spoiled it further. He could have grabbed and quickly handballed. He did the perfect thing to do, which was grab the ball and lock it in. It's not going to be holding the ball because he hasn't had prior. Um, so Rog grabs it, locks it in. A big brutal tackle gets laid on him and it slips slightly high. This final siren goes, Waddle Park, congratulations. You just won the game by one point. Thanks to yours truly. That's, that's resonated in the, in the cockles. That's, Holy shit. That's got me a bit fired up. What a Holy win. Holy shit, what a brave effort. Three players went down. Fuck, that's, that's, that's emotional sort of stuff. It's a reversal last week. 
thought we were going to lose it again. Oh, I kicked one out in the fall. <laughs> I kicked one out in the fall. <laughs> but you set up the winner as well. I kicked the winning goal out in the fall. <laughs> Oh, we needed that. Oh. We needed that. Put me in the middle, coach. Put me in the middle. <laughs> Look what happens. On, Look what happens. On, Great game for you, Kala. BOG. <laughs> Jared Amos, come to save us. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roger, that last effort where if you run up and it just goes yeah, out yeah. the back. Oh. And, and, and you went. All, all, but if you don't go, yeah, yeah the ball's on him. Just great. Huge. All of that huge went nuts. through the head instantly. I was like, because I was back shoulder the whole quarter. Yeah. The whole quarter, I was like, back shoulder. I'm not even thinking about anything else. Then that moment, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go on the foot. I think the high was a bit lucky. I didn't know. Yeah, but it? you didn't bend over the duck. You just yeah. stopped to lock it yeah. in. Yeah. And then I think, it, I think it's because you had your hands up here. Yeah. When he grabbed your arm and he went like this to just hold the ball in, yeah. his arm just slipped up. And then I was just praying because I was fucked. What was going through your mind at the end there? you were having the show. Um, take as much time as possible. I reckon it was almost a minute. Yeah. I, I marked it, I went back, and then I was just like, I don't know, Dosh should put in all of my goal kicking challenges. Anytime we're from the boundary, I kick drop punts. Yeah. I'm a drop punt merchant. But I was like, I probably got more chance of just scoring if I kick a snap. Yeah. So I was like, I'll kick a snap. But I, I reckon I would have kicked it if I kicked a drop punt. It almost looked like he was going to go out in the fold. Did you think that at all? When I first, when I like kicked it, I was like, oh, I've ballied it. <laughs> I've, I've completely ballied it. But then it just snuck through and I was like, happy days. Beautiful. One of the most important wins we've had this season. This now gives us a sniff to finish in the top four and make finals. It's kept our season alive and um, and now our our fixture opens up a little bit. So an enormous victory by the lads and just one of the more remarkable contests um, you'll ever see. Um, I could be back this week. It's probably more likely the week after, but um, I'm definitely a sniff. To, to get up for this week. So the return is near for C McDonald. We appreciate all the support. We appreciate everyone tuning into these videos and we'll see you for some more content very, very soon. Cheers, guys.